the video, we, we saw you riding a, a motorcycle. That's not a crime in Africa <laughs> no, If you follow the rest of what I'm going to say, you're still good at it. Um, motorcycles and transformers seem to have some association uh, from my limited knowledge. So, Che Guevara also went onto a journey in Latin America uh, on a motorcycle. So, uh, we have a movie it's called Motorcycle Diaries. And that transformed his understanding of the human condition and interestingly of the kind of health conditions that people lived in. What did your motorcycle journeys teach you and how has it influenced you? <laughs> I uh, crisscrossed India on my motorcycle. I rode… Oh, I must confess I don't ride a motorcycle. I… I did not ride with a destination in my mind, I simply rolled. Because at that time for me, it's… it's very difficult to explain this to you because uh, let me put it as succinctly as possible. As I paid attention to the world around myself, for me the most striking aspect of creation was the geometry of creation. It's much later that I earned… that I learned that yoga is a very intrinsic geometry, very exquisite geometry as to how to align your system to the larger geometry of the cosmos. This is something that came to me later. But right from my childhood, if I looked at a tree, I looked at the million forms of geometry first, that is what dazzled me. Before I could even grasp the color and the other aesthetic aspect of it, if I look at a human being, if I just see them, how they sit and stand, I can easily tell them in next ten years what problems will they have, how will they live, what will be the state of their body, what will be the state of their mind, simply looking at the geometry of their system. The entire universe is just perfection of geometry. For example, there is a solar system in which we are exist. Because planet is maintaining a certain geometry of moment, we are on. Suppose Planet Earth decides to meander a bit, go for a picnic and come back. Well, it won't come back. It's because the precision of geometry is all the time on, universe is on. Similarly, in our own bodies, the geometry is in a certain way, so it's functioning. A misaligned geometry means you're going towards… Perfection of geometry means a machine lasts for the longest period of time. So for me, the terrain of India just gr grabbed me like that. For me, just the thing is to look at that little outcrop, that rock, that one bent something, you know. It is like in my mind, there are hundreds and hundreds of hours of video that even today I can play back. It's like that for me because I very judiciously saw that I don't get educated to the shock of my highly educated father. <laughs> right from the day you're born, everybody is trying to teach you something that's not worked for them. <laughs> so, because I kept nothing in my mind, even today, <laughs> just to make myself, my head look substantial, I wear something <laughs> because otherwise it's just empty most of the time <laughs> So I just grabbed the… the visual images, the geometry of the terrain, how a rock is sitting, how a small pebble is sitting, how a grasshopper is sitting, even today it runs in my mind. People ask, Sadhguru, how do you spend your time? Suppose, uh, you know, you don't read, you don't do anything, how do you do? If I just turn on my video, my motorcycle days, it just runs and runs and runs and runs endlessly. There were times, you, you won't believe this because this became such a… it's very difficult to say this, the motorcycle, the me and the earth became so much one that I would ride sometimes three days and three nights without sleep and barely with any food, 
because uh, all my money went into the tank. <laughs> this tank was empty, it doesn't… it didn't matter. I want to keep this tank full and I want to make few more kilometers if I can with whatever little I have. So I crisscrossed India, this grasp of the terrain is so big in me, people may think, what is there to learn about the terrain? Did you learn geography? Did you learn the geology? No, I learned nothing. It's just that I absorbed the earth in a certain way into myself. And of course the people, I never ever stayed in a hotel, I just had a tiny little tent if I had to pitch it in a forest, otherwise I just rode into some village somewhere, walked into somebody's house and I told them I just need a shower and I'm hungry. Never I got refused. Always they welcomed me, <laughs> I had my shower, ate well, sometimes they allowed me to sleep there. Many times I never asked their names, they never asked what's my name, I just rode on the next day morning <laughs> So there was an incredible connect with the people. I didn't have to know people to make themselves… to make them a part of my life. I did not have to own the land to make it mine. I did not have to own anything to make it mine. I think that's the biggest lesson that came to me with my motorcycling, that I did not have to possess anything to make it mine. I already made all of you mine. You may not give me permission, I don't care, I have made it mine, that's all. And because of this, my life is constantly exuberant and phenomenally rich because I've not seen one human being who is not uh, very, very deeply involved with me. I involve them, whether they involve or not. It's a good starting. <laughs> but today, today's world…